Hi, my name is Alan Tsao and I help students master AP Physics 1. Today I want to go through a quick review of circular motion just to make sure we understand the core concepts, especially for some of you who are reviewing for the AP exam. Just want to make sure that circular motion is super clear. A lot of people get confused by circular motion, but I actually think it's actually really easy. If you understand drawing the free body diagrams, if you understand forces, circular motion is actually pretty simple. Okay, so let me pull up uh, what we're gonna work on here. So biggest thing, the biggest thing about circular motion is that acceleration is not always about speeding things up. Sometimes things are moving in a circular path, okay? Like, like an object will travel in this direction. And what happens is the velocity is tangential, like the velocity is changing. Whenever the velocity is changing, even the direction, there is an acceleration. And we call that acceleration centripetal acceleration which is given by V squared over R. Now, centripetal acceleration has a magnitude. It's how fast you're going squared divided by the radius. And it also has a direction associated with that. Centripetal acceleration is always the acceleration that an object will feel when it's turning, and it's always directed towards the center of the circle. So towards center of the circle. This is the key thing to remember, though. There are no new forces in circular motion. The forces, if you go back to the lesson on how to draw a free body diagram, we do not draw the free body diagram any differently. The only thing we have to remember is if a something is moving in a circular path, a curved path, there is an acceleration perpendicular to the velocity towards the center of the circle. Okay. The other thing that you might run into as, uh, in terms of review is uh, overall is a uh, banked motion, right? Banked motion are cars that they're making a turn. Okay, so banked roads. This is a common. This is a topic. It's not hasn't been tested as much lately, but it's a car that's moving in a circular path here. All right, let me see if I can find a good picture of it. Uh, but what's happening is the car is inclined. And this is more of an application of circular motion. It's not like it's very, very difficult, but we have a car that's moving here. Now, if you look at this, all right, there's a circle, circular motion that the car is traveling. The acceleration is directed towards the center of the circle. That's what we just stated. It's always towards the center of the circle for centripetal acceleration. And so when you draw the free body diagram, yeah, just like you have an inclined plane, you have mg, you're definitely going to have Fn. You may have static friction if it's not sliding up and down the ramp. But notice that because the acceleration is purely horizontal, we do not rotate our axes. We actually decompose them into vertical like x and y direction because the whole reason we rotated the axes for incline plane was because the acceleration was up and down the ramp. Here, the acceleration is horizontal. So when you just keep in mind, you're not going to rotate the axes and decompose it like you would other objects that are sliding down the incline plane. Okay. And that, and then the last thing in this unit is for circular motion gravity is Newton's law of motion, Newton's law of gravity. And that's G M one M two over R squared. This is for forces for planets, objects that are, that are far from the surface of the earth. Right for mg that's near the surface of the Earth, and then for far from the surface of the Earth, you would use this equation, and you might even put like the mass of the Earth over r squared, which is how far away you are. Now, in order to make them align, this part here we call the gravitational field, which is the acceleration due to gravity. Okay. So that is everything you need to know for circular motion gravity. Now let's focus on the hard part for most people is actually executing the process. Remember the free body diagram process is not any different. It's the exact same rules for drawing free body diagrams here as it is for um, anything else. It's not any different just because it's circular motion. So I'm going to do one FRQ here just to kind of illustrate this. So we have a ball, mass m on string with length r, negligible mass. The ball moves in clockwise in a vertical circle as shown above. When the ball is at point P, the string is horizontal. Point Q is the bottom of the circle. Point Z is the top of the circle. Blah, blah, blah. Figures below draw and label all the forces exerted on the ball when it's at P and Q, respectively. Okay, free body diagram. Here are our rules for free body diagrams. It's not any different just because of moving in a circle. All right? At point P, we have gravity. Always start with gravity. 
The NSA, what's touching the ball? There's a rope touching the ball. Where is it? A ropes can only pull, and so it would be this way. How about at point Q? We also have gravity. Anything touching the ball, the string is touching the ball. Which way is it pulling? It's pulling upward because the rope is, the, the tension forces always pull in the direction of the rope. Nothing else is touching the ball. Those are all the forces. There are no other forces. And we use the exact same rules that we did when we did the drawing the free body diagrams. Part B, derive an expression for V min, the minimum speed the ball can have point Z without leaving the circular path. So we want to know something about here. We're going to draw a free body diagram at point Z. And what are all the forces while well, we have gravity acting downward? And then at the top here, the rope is like this. So it's pulling downward, right? Now, what do we do after we draw a free body diagram? After the free body diagram, the next step is F net equals MA. We have to know which way the acceleration is. At the very top of the circle, it's moving in a circle. So there's acceleration directed towards the center of the circle. That's called the centripetal acceleration. And we have two forces in the same direction. So the net force is going to be mg plus the tension equals m times the acceleration, which in this case is centripetal acceleration. So I replace it with v squared over r, where r is the radius of the circle, which is r there. Okay. Then you can solve for v, Okay, because I want to know how fast it's going. So I'm going to do r mg plus rt divided by m here is equal to v squared, and then take the square root to solve for v. Okay, So this is my equation for the velocity. Now, this is the v min. What is the minimum speed the ball can have? So if the ball has different speeds, what can change on this side of the equation? Well, the mass of the ball doesn't change. g doesn't change. We're assuming that we haven't made the rope any longer, so r isn't going to change. But the tension can change, right? And so the smaller v is. What is the smallest that this thing could be is when the tension is zero, right? Because the tension can't be negative. It can't like push outward, right? So the, the tension has to be there. So once it's zero, then we can have the smallest V because nothing else can change. So then the R, you get RMG over M or just the M's cancel and you get root RG, okay? The maximum tension the string can have without breaking is T max, derive an expression for V max, the maximum speed can have at point Q without breaking the string. Okay, so we have a free body diagram. We do F net equals MA. It's moving in a circle, so there's centripetal acceleration directed towards the center of the circle. That's the rule for centripetal acceleration, towards the center of the circle. So when I apply F net equals MA, I'm going to get, let's say, up is the positive direction towards the, the acceleration. So that's going to be T minus MG, because MG is down the negative direction. That's going to be MV squared over R. And you can solve for a V max. So we're going to solve for V. We're going to multiply by R. OK, so multiply by R times T minus MG divided by M equals V squared. So the V is equal to root R T minus MG over M. Now, this is the maximum. If it gets bigger and bigger and bigger, what's going to change on this side of the equation? Well, the M, the G, and the R can't change. None of those can change. But the T can change. The tension can increase. And it can increase to a point where it's at T max. And that would be my V max. Okay. So you see, we're still doing the same process. We draw a free body diagram. We do F net equals MA. It's just now the A might be V squared over R. That's the only difference between forces and dynamics in this part. Part D, suppose the string breaks at the instant the ball is at point P. Describe the motion of the ball immediately after the string breaks. Okay, so now I break this string and it was going upwards. So now it's upwards and the force is downwards. That's just like it's gonna go up and then come back down. There's no more centripetal acceleration. It's not gonna continue the curve because there's no more force to change its direction. There's no force to cause a centripetal acceleration. And so it's just going to go up and then come back down. But at least A, B, and C were the big parts I wanted to review with you guys. So just keep in mind that, that, that process there, that process. Draw that free body diagram. Do F net equals MA. Just that the A might be V squared over R, and it's directed towards the center of the circle.